Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we watched the author make his submission to the journal. In this video, we'll see what the editor sees once the submission was made. This video is a little bit longer than usual as it covers quite a bit of important information about the editorial interface. Our editor is Calaris, and in OJS, the journal editor is very powerful. Editors can see everything that's going on throughout the journal. They can see and edit all the user accounts. They can temporarily log in as other users on the system and can make any and all decisions about the submissions. Some journals just have one single editor who does just about everything, including working with the authors, selecting reviewers, doing the copy editing, layout editing and proofreading. Other journals are divided into a single chief editor providing oversight with multiple section editors, each of whom takes responsibility for the submissions into their section of the journal. And they might and they may also have dedicated copy editors, layout editors and proofreaders. This is the setup we're going to follow in this course but it is important to know that OJS is flexible enough to work with any staffing configuration you might need. Kala received an automatic email from the journal, letting her know that a new submission has arrived. This kind of automation is just one example of the many ways that OJS makes running a journal easier and more efficient. Here, she's logged in and can see all of the submissions she is working with, including the one from Jalal. Now, let's go over what we see on screen. The options on the left are covered in more detail in the setting up a journal in OJS 3.3 course, so I won't cover them now. Along the top, you can see the following tabs. My queue, where we are now, that includes all the submissions that are my responsibility as an editor. If your journal has multiple editors, this can help divide up the work and keep track of who needs to be on top of what. Unassigned includes any submissions that do not currently have an editor assigned to it. This might be the case if an editor has left the journal and withdrawn from a submission midway through the workflow. Be sure to check here from time to time to ensure no submissions have fallen through the cracks. The All Active tab includes all submissions that are currently in progress. This is where chief editors spend a lot of time ensuring everyone's on top of their assignments and submissions are continuing to move through the workflow. Archives includes all submissions that have been rejected or that have already been published. At a glance, you can see which stage each submission is at, including the first stage, submission, the second stage, review, the copy editing stage, and the production stage. Using the blue arrow to the right, you can expand the entry to see additional details, including whether assigned reviews have been completed, if revisions have been submitted, or if there are any open discussions. Important notes, such as whether a review is overdue, are also included in this interface. If you have a long list of submissions, you can also use the search tool at the top to type in an author name or a title keyword, and that will help you narrow the one you're looking for. In addition, you can use the filters to limit down the list just to those that are overdue or incomplete in a specific stage of the process and by day since last activity. In OJS 3.3, you can also filter by the name of the editor assigned to that submission, journal section, and the issue it has been scheduled or published in. Now let's take a look at the submission from our author Jalal by clicking on View. This takes us into the detailed record of this submission. Let's go to the top. We can see the submission ID the author's last name and the title of the submission. At the right, you can see the activity log button that opens a pop-up window that lists all the activities 
related to this specific submission, the date, the user responsible for that change, and the description. In the second tab, you can also enter a note for the future by writing it on the box and selecting Add Note. Right next to the activity log, we have the submissions library. Here, we can add files to easily share them with, with the author and other members of the editorial team. Here, we can add a file by clicking on the button or view the publisher's document library to download a file and then upload it into the submission. The window is divided into two sections, workflow and publication. Workflow is divided into the four steps of the editorial process. On the first tab, Submission, we'll see the new submissions that have been sent to the journal. We have a Submission Files area where we can see the file uploaded by the author, the date, and the submission component. To download it, we can just click on the title. Clicking on the expansion button will give you more information about this file, such as the activity log and some notes. We can also edit the file and change its name or delete it. Here, our author only uploaded one file. However, he could have uploaded more if the submission required it. If we have a long list, we can always use the search button to search by file name. We can also upload new files using the button or download all the files included in the submission with the download all files button. Once you have downloaded the file and read it, you might have some questions that you want to ask the author. You can do this by using the pre-review discussions. Discussions are a part of OJS where you can have a conversation between different people involved in the submission and have it all tracked. You can add a new discussion by clicking on the button, selecting the participants, adding the subject, the message, and if needed, some attached files. When you're ready, you can click on OK. You can also start direct discussions with another participant, going to the participant list on the right, clicking on the expansion arrow and clicking on the notify link. This will create a discussion between yourself and the participant you chose, and you can use an email template or write in your message. Once you're happy with the changes, you can click on Notify. This will also create a new discussion that we can find on the pre-review discussion section. We can open the discussion by clicking on the title to see the message. We can also add more messages and even attach files if needed. Clicking on the expansion arrow, we can edit or delete this discussion. This list also shows how many replies this discussion has and whether this discussion is open or closed. On the right, we have some action buttons. The first one, Send to Review, is the one we would click once we have decided this is ready for consideration and peer review, and this button will move it on to the next stage. Accept and Skip Review might be used for something like an editorial commentary that has been submitted and you want to bypass peer review and just move it right into copy editing. And the next one, decline submission, is if you decide that this submission is not appropriate for publication. If you decide to decline the submission, you can send a notification to the author or decide not to do it. And then click on Record Editorial Decision. You can see in the top of the page that the status of the submission has changed. And now it shows a declined red button at the top. If you change your mind about declining this decision, you can always click on Change Decision and revert the decline. The wizard will ask you to confirm and the submission will go back to the last stage. Below the action buttons, you have the participants list. This is everybody who's involved in the submission. At this point, we just have the journal editor and the author. But over time, we're going to be adding copy editors, layout editors, proofreaders, and whatever works best for your workflow. Everyone involved with the submission gets added to the participants list. The one exception, the reviewers, would not be listed here to keep their identity secret. Now, as the editor-in-chief, we will assign a section editor to, to take over the submission through the rest of the workflow. To do this, let's click on the Assign button. This 
will open a wizard where you can locate a user to assign it to the submission. First, we'll have to select the role that we're looking for from this drop-down menu. Now we're looking for the section editor and we can click on search. This will show all the section editors registered in our journal. Now we'll select team. If we want to limit that the section editor could do and only allow them to make a recommendation as opposed to actually make a decision and interact with the author, we would check the first box. But we trust him and we want him to go all the way with the selection process. You can also limit the permissions that this user has to make changes on the submissions metadata. You can see a drop down that gives us a couple of options for a subject line and an automatic mail shows up here. We can edit this text if needed. Some of the fields like editor, URL or username will be filled in automatically. Once we're happy with the changes, let's click on OK. Two things have happened. An email has gone out to Tim, letting him know that we'd like him to take on this assignment, as well as we can see on the pre-review discussions. We can also see Tim has been included as the section editor in the participants list. Kala can now leave it to Tim to take on the rest of the work in moving this through the workflow and we'll see how that works out in the next video. Thanks for watching this module. I'll see you again on the next one.